Shooting Replica Civil War Revolvers. I'm Hovey Smith. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and the corresponding editor covering black powder for Gun Digest. Now, I've been shooting percussion revolvers since the 1950s. These guns are good and reliable if used properly. With the Civil War 150th anniversary on us right now, there's a lot of interest in these old guns, and they've been out long enough that some of these things are now being passed down from grandfather to grandson. So let me give you a little primer about one of the most common types that's available. This is a CVA so-called Confederate revolver that has a brass frame. It's 44 caliber. I say so-called because actually the originals, the brass frame Confederates, were much more likely to be 36 caliber than 44. That being said, these guns are out there. All right, I got one. Well, I do it. Okay. Well, you can shoot it. These were designed to be combat arms at close range. And by close range, I mean 10 yards and closer. These were not long distance shooters. Although, if a person really knew his gun, like Doc Holliday did, yeah, you could plank somebody off at a longer range than that. But these were usually come over the top of the trench and go bang kind of thing. All right. That being said, Colt used an open top design, which is intrinsically weak. The Remington pattern guns, such as this modernized version, which has a longer barrel and adjustable sights, has a solid frame. Why did Colt stick so long with the open top design for so many of its revolvers? Now, they did make a root design, which did have a solid frame very late. But these guns, the great majority of them are open top. Why? The reason was reliability. The weak part of the percussion system is this copper percussion cap. It's so small as to not almost be visible from where you are. But these go on the nipples right here. All right, so the gun is aimed and fired like yay. Then, as seen in some very old movies, if you've ever seen a Tom Mix movie or some of the early Gene Autry movies, there was a very exaggerated raising of the gun and cocking like this, and then a pulling down on the target again before the gun was fired the second time. Why? This was to allow the spent copper percussion caps to fall free from the gun and not tie up the cylinder against this fixed plate here. The Colt design actually had a groove machined on the inside to allow a little more clearance. So these guns were actually more reliable in combat. And so that's why Colt stuck with this open top design for so long. All right. Well, I'm going to load it up. And we're going to shoot it, and I'll show you what it'll do. In loading this gun, we'll use a loading stand. And the first thing you do is to put it on half cock, which allow the chambers to freely rotate. All right. You measure you some powder. Now, I've already weighed this out, so I know that this container has about 25 grains capacity. So that's what we want to load. 25 grains of triple FG. All right. These two brass cartridge cases form nice little loading tools. Okay. Then we seat a wad in the chamber, like yay. Over the top of that, we put a ball. Then you rotate around, and you use the loading lever to push the ball down into the, cha into the chamber, like that. And you hear a little crimp, and you're also cutting off a little ring of lead off the side of the ball, and that's normal. Okay, flick that away. Then take a wax wad, and you put over the top of the chamber there, 
push that down in and that helps seal it and prevents chain fires. Now usually I would wait until I load the entire cylinder before I put the wads on. So we're going to go ahead and load it up and then we're going to shoot it. Okay, we've got the pistol ready to go now. You can see the percussion caps on the nipples. You can see the ends of the chamber with the wax on them. I need to put in my earplugs. I've already got glasses on. And you should wear both of these, by the way. All right, got those then. No one should be standing to the side of you here, or this side, because you will get cap fragments being blown in that direction, and you'll get burning powder blown in that direction. So everybody stays back of the shooter. So here we go. We have the target down at 10 yards. The loading lever coming down was a typical thing that happened in the day. Stayed up that time. All right, I fired five shots. Now you can see what I'm talking about with the percussion caps. You see how these are hanging on? So they would raise a gun, do like this, and hopefully the percussion caps would spontaneously fall. One did at least. There went another. Okay. So we have one chamber yet unfired, which I will save for another use. So here we have the target. There are actually five bullet holes in it and a number of impact points from other things. We have one, two, three, four, five. So Five holes at 10 yards. Incidentally, I was aiming here. So the bullets were striking about six inches high at 10 yards, which is not unusual. Sometimes they will fall very much left or right in particular uh, with these guns. In serious target shooting, where it's allowed, people will put a spotter target down here somewhere and actually aim at that, and the bullets will go into the bullseye some distance away. Not bad for a combat gun, but insufficient for hunting. For more information on percussion revolvers, I have a seven-part video series on YouTube. I also have more materials on my books, blogs, videos, and on my radio show, Hobie's Outdoor Adventures, at www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors.